we sing this song, but think about the words. Because ev everything that is in the world belongs to God. And God is our Father. So he owns everything. Remember the temptation when Jesus, when the devil tempted Jesus. Oh, if you worship me, I'll give you all the riches of the world. And it don't belong to you. It belongs to God. So we know that whatever we own in life is not ours. It's for God. Because we, we are here to enjoy it. But we have to move on and leave it. God owns everything. Let's sing it again. My father is a millionaire. I'm setting on gold. My father is a millionaire. I'm setting on gold. Every step I take. My father's a millionaire. I think he's a trillionaire. <laughs> and more, and more, and more. Do anything. What a pleasure it is, and it's lovely to see everybody. And all the smile. I like smiles. So I came around earlier on, everybody was smiling. Welcome, everybody. Those on the way, those online. And most of all, we welcome the Holy Spirit. Welcome God. Word of prayer. Father, we've come together as a church, as a wider church, because throughout the country, throughout today, there will be trillions, billions worshipping you, thanking you, praising you, bringing their cares, bringing their concerns to you. But you know everything. Before it happens, when it happens, but Father, I mean, does say, Bring your burdens, lay them down at my feet. So we do bring our burdens, we lay them down. And Father, we look to you, we look towards the light, despite the darkness around us. We look to you because you are all welcoming. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And... The welcome song, the opening song, is I Believe in Jesus. Is that right? And that's why we're here, because we believe in Jesus. Yeah? We believe in Jesus. We believe he's the Son of God. We believe he died and rose again. He died for us all. And we believe he's here now. He's here now. Help me. He's here now. Standing in our midst. Why? 
Why is it here now? To heal, to heal, to forgive. So if you've come with any healing that's needed, that we all do, lay them down. Can we stand, please? Standing in our midst. In Psalms 117. And it's going to come up on the board. And can we all say it? Psalm 117 says, Praise the Lord, all ye nations. Extol him, all you people. For great is his love towards us. The faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, Come to the Lord in prayer. Right. I'm just going to have a period of one minute of silence whereby you bring your own personal prayers, concerns, thanksgiving, family, friends, the world before the Lord. Okay? And he's here standing in our midst. He's not, he's not far away. He's right, right here. Just reach out and touch him. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He cares, he worries about his people. We are his children. And our loved ones are with him. He holds us 
in his hands gives us life gives us breath he feeds us nourishes us heals us Amen Amen I know the prayers I would say this in Psalm 74, sorry, 24, it says, The earth is the Lord and everything in it. The world is his and all who live in it. He founded it and upon the seas. He established it upon the waters. Lord, we come to you this day. We praise you for who you are. We give you thanks. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for being with us. We thank you for our dear pastor, Glenford Gordon, now residing with you. We thank you that through him, you took us to a higher level in our knowledge of you. For his family, we give you thanks. We also pray for the lonely, for the sick, for the old, for the children, for the young adults. We pray for the medical people. We all look towards the medical people. This body, this body that we, that your spirits are in bodies, your temple, it gets worn. Get, get sold. It doesn't function as it should be. So we pray for the NHS, for the doctors, for the nurses, for the patients in hospital, for those in intensive care, for those in any at this very moment in time, for the dentists and all the medical people out there. Father, there's wars around the world. Your people are is suffering. We're all your people. We pray for Gaza that there'll be peace. For Ethiopia, Yemen, Sudan, and, and the peoples in those countries and throughout who lack the basic essentials for life. Water, food, warmth, safety, somewhere to, to sleep peaceably. We pray for the mentally ill, the homeless. Lord, have mercy. But most of all, we leave all those and we look to you, the beginner, the giver, the taker, of life in Jesus name we say the Lord's prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be your name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sins against us into temptation, deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And our welcome song is Be Bold, Be Strong, for the Lord our God is with us. And as we sing this, if you're able to just circulate and welcome. But, it, but there's a time limit. <laughs> it's about three to four minutes. Thank you. Be bold, be strong. Circulate. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Be bold.
Thank you, thank you. Yes, no, walking around I saw lots of bold people, lots of firm handshakes, and be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God. Okay, and Myrtle's going to bring us the, uh, the Bible reading. It's quite a long reading. Okay, Dr. Roberts is around somewhere, I think, yeah? So, yeah, it's quite a long reading. So. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. Are you sitting comfortably? Because <laughs> this is quite a long one. Um, it's Mark 6, verses 14 to 34. And in my Bible, at the beginning, it says, John the Baptist beheaded. So starting at verse 14... King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, he is Elijah, and still others claimed, he is a prophet like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, the man I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had bound and put him in prison he did this because of Herodias, his brother, Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guest. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I will give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask him for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with a request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed. Because of his oaths and his dinner guest, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. And then it goes on, Jesus feeds the 5,000. The apostles gathered round Jesus and reported to him 
all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Amen. <laughs> and thank you, Dr. Roberts, for actually um, presenting, not presenting, giving that um, very exquisite Bible reading. I um, can't wait to get going. Welcome our Secretary Assistant. Yes? Let's move in. Good morning, folks. Good morning and welcome into the house of the Lord. We want to give God thanks this morning for the Holy Spirit and for him waking us up this morning. You know, um, recently I have been experiencing the move of the Holy Spirit in a magnificent way. While I was about to prepare um, the notice, because you know, we do have to prepare, I looked at Psalm 117 because 121 has been running through my mind for all this time, and I thought, you know, we used that last week. And 117 was the scripture I looked at to use as an opening. So I'm not going to make any, um, any apologies for saying, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Where does your help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. The maker of heaven and earth. The Lord watches over you and the Lord watches over me. The Lord is my shade, is your shade upon our right hand. The Lord will keep you, he will keep me from all harm. The Lord will watch over your life. The Lord watches over our life, watches over our coming and our going now and forevermore. And I've been living on that psalm for the last few weeks. That has been my waking up, my going to bed, my first thought. And I make no apologies, as I said. The word of God lives and reigns forever. So welcome this morning, friends, um, church brethren, and everyone who's watching online, to our communion service this morning. As we can see, the table is spread. For those who love the Lord, has been walking with the Lord. You can partake. For those who are watching online, you can get yourselves ready to partake when we do. And the theme of our service this morning is purpose over pain. Purpose over pain. My God. Thank you, Brother, um, brother Gregory, for getting that word ready. So, welcome. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the fa our Father who is of our peace, our righteousness, our comfort, and our Savior. Um, as I said, the table is spread. So we welcome you one and all to this morning's service, to Michael, who's leading, or oh, um, musician um, Garfield. Is it Garfield? Bernard, sorry. Sorry, giving you another name. Um, Brother Gregory, who will be bringing the word. And each and every one, I just want to welcome you in the house of the Lord, each and every one of you, a special welcome remains for you. I want to thank all those who have been helping us doing routinely, just getting the services off the ground seamlessly because, you know, we know that right now we are in a storm, but things are going great, and thanks to God Almighty who's been providing us with all the support that we need. Thank you all for choosing City Road Baptist Church as your place of worship today, and we pray that a blessing be on you. Um, right, so we want to give God thanks again today. Housekeeping. 
If you have not done so already, can I kindly ask you to put your mobile phones in silence or turn them off so we don't have any disturbance. The toilet facilities are out my right and you, um, all the ladies, gents and um, disability and toilet changing facilities are there. Alarms, we don't ex expect to get, have an alarm going off, but if it does go off, there is stewards and the deacons will take you out to the safest possible entrance. Offering, we'll collect the offering this morning, but if you so choose, you can give your offering online and the information is coming up now to give your offering online. Amen? Okay, so I hope you all have an information sheet. Um, please read it and take note. So tomorrow, as I said, it's all purpose for paying service. As of this week, the one thing I want us to take note of is pastor's um, funeral service taking place on Tuesday at Cannon Street. And most of you may be aware that we have, a, which is on the sheet, there's a coach will be here 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning. We're leaving, looking to leave at about 9.15 um, to take us to Cannon Street, to the cemetery, back here to pick up your vehicle, and also back to the repass. If for any reason you may not be able to pick up the coach from here, don't feel you cannot get on the coach later on. It's not just for here, it's, it's throughout the day. So the coach will be available, and as we said, it's a contribution of about five pounds, okay? So just because we know that Cannon Street, the, the parking facility is dire, so it just makes life easier. So that Maxine has informed me that as of tomorrow, the streaming will be online, will be available. The streaming for the this, this service will be available as of tomorrow. Um, so for the rest of next week, it carries on with the different activities from Tuesday right up until Friday. Tomorrow evening, the worship group will be meeting to have a rehearsal for the funeral on Friday. Um, just a correction, I don't know if it's on yours, Good Friday, 29th of March, will be the joint service at St. Germain's. Um, right. And all these are subjected to the will and good pleasure of our Lord Jesus Christ. We just want to continue to encourage you all in prayer. Um, on the prayer sheet, it does have um, the, the Gordon family, Sister Darcy Edwards, and Sister Maisie Edwards. I'd just like to add Veronica Campbell, who a lot of us know who worships here. She is in Jamaica at the moment. Her mom has passed. So we just want to remember her in our prayers as she continue to um, see, sort out things. You know, it's, not, it's, it's tough enough being, doing it um, here, what says in a place where you don't live. But th I understand things are going well with her and she value our prayers. Or Sister Maxine also asked to send um, deepest heartfelt congratulations, heartfelt, uh, I'm it now, to the church, the wider church, and everyone for her, all our support and cards and gifts that we have, she has received from the fellowship at the passing of her dear husband our lovely, wonderful pastor. She just wants to say thank you, heartful thank you. for you. We see the service we had here last week for those who were here or who were watching, and we just want to say thank you. Um, so on Tuesday again, I think a cottage will be passing by the church, and that's going to be about 9.30. So um, for those who are not going, who will be around or would like to be, the cottage will be passing here pastors, uh, you know, we're passing here and going on to, um, to Cannon Street. I leave with you Psalm 91 verse 1, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He is our refuge, he is our fortress, and he is a God in whom we trust. So I say thank you for listening, have yourself a blessed day and a blessed week, and God be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Les. If you'd like to, if you'd like to come up to the, come on, come on.
morning, all. Good morning. Making sure that he's heard. Okay? I don't know. Hello. Good morning. May I say many thanks for your kindness and support as I celebrate my 90th birthday. Many thanks for your lovely cards and the gifts and for the gifts which I retain, I will remain for many years. I was glad to see so many of my brothers and sisters make the effort to be with me on, my, on Tuesday, which was my birthday. It teaches me how good it is for brothers and sisters to live in unity. I will always remember the lovely treatment I have received over the years, and I will be very thankful. God bless, and best wishes to all. Amen. <clears throat> Thanks, Bill. And anybody else that's 90? <laughs> Who feels 90? <laughs> Who would like to be nice? Anyway, thanks, Bill. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I, I think it's the uh, tide and offering. Is that right? Yes. And it is the song, offering song. It's to you I give the glory, it's to you I give the praise. Thank you. 
memory verse time. <laughs> and last week's was um, Psalm 27, verse 5. Yes, and Trevor has got it all in his head. I know that for a fact. <laughs> it's not an easy one. It's, it's about four or five lines. And I've done my homework. I've written it out here. <laughs> and it's not on the back of my hand either. Yes. Any volunteers? Oh, Diane. Come on. Come on, Diane. Come on, Diane. <laughs> And last one, last line, you and set me high you upon the rock. Set me high upon the rock. Yes, that's it. That's lovely. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes, and Trevor was ready to go for that one, I'm sure. Yes, and uh, Laurel, I think, you know, they're the uh, kings and queens of the. Um, memory verse at the moment. So your crowns may slip a little bit, by the way. You know, we've got another contender over there. Okay, right, can we have it on the screen, please? How can we say it all together? Psalm 27, verse 5. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tabern tabernacle, me high upon a rock. Okay, something to, to start to meditate on this week. It's a bit of a tongue twister as well, you know, but it's, it's going to get there. And this week's memory verse is one of the verses that was read this morning. Um, Mark chapter 6, verse 34. And here we go. Ready? <laughs> so proud he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd so he began teaching them many things okay and the teaching he says what's compassion love help concerns yeah many words yes Jesus has compassion on us, yeah? And likewise, we should have compassion for others. Thank you, this is memory verse. Thank you, everybody, and here we go. Testimonies and exaltations. I'm, I'm gonna rush in while you're thinking of yours. Right, Maxine, your husband, Pastor Gordon found out in our discussions that we needed our bathroom redone. That was about a year and a half ago. I just let it drop. And he said, what do you need doing? It? Right. And I said, complete refurbishment. All tiles come off, plastered, retiled, bath turned round, new bath, new toilet, new sink, shower, floor and he said have you got anybody and I says not at the moment we're looking around he says I can do that <laughs> me and you right with your help knowing him I thought he's gonna start and he's gonna let me to do it you know <laughs> yes and I said no what would the church say what would his wife say you know he's down at the Hendrickson's doing the bathroom I can't have this you know and the Mert was quite interested. He said, go on. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> it won't happen. So we put him off. Yeah, but you did say a few years ago that he did your extension, not extension, I've converted the loft or something like that. And it took him months. Yes, okay. <laughs> so it's an example of faith in action, isn't it? You know? And he uses the words tangible. You know, doing things hands-on, 
he's prepared to do it. So, you know, that's all that stuck in my mind. And we didn't get it done for another year. And I was dreading him asking me, have you had it done yet? <laughs> but, he, but he only asked once, <laughs> you know. So that was my testimony. Yes, Pastor Gordon, he, he, he was a doer. He got things done. He took down those plastic, one of those plastic um, barriers on the inside. And he told me about it and he said, who helped you? And he says, no one. Got the ladder, he got up there, did, um, did the screws, brought down the plastic. And it was here, wasn't it? It, it was the shield during COVID. You know, I could, you know, why did he do that? Carpet on the floor. He laid most of that by himself, went out and bought it. And then he was showing us, he said, here, look at this. And I'm thinking, that's, that's incredible, you know. And even the, uh, the wallpaper here, he, he actually, you know, he, he, did it, uh, he didn't put it on, but he bought it for the decorators, you know. So it, it just, it was faith in action. It, it didn't hang about. It got, it, it got going on numerous things, you know, which you all know about. So it's, it's something for me. Okay, it's okay saying bless you and help and pray for you, but if, if you can actually hands on and help and support, that's what it's all about. Right, that's my testimony and my exaltation. So, so can I have, not for me, for... Uh, <laughs> Good morning again, folks. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are surprised to see me limping around the field. I've seen somebody up to Monday. I fasted. We had a great day at fasting. Did we run a great day? Yes, we had a great day at fasting. However, and, um, I've been having some issues with plant pain. Uh, you know, we take you, parasites and all the pain fillers, and you go through it. But on Tuesday, Wednesday, the pain in my knee started playing up. and was happening around the doctor who said to me, oh, mom, you need to go to the doctor, that's why. Anyway, um, woke up on the first morning feeling okay. I said, okay, can you go to the gym? I drove myself there. And um, as I was getting out of the car, I must have twisted my, my knee. And I don't want to tell you what I've seen. I didn't swear. <laughs> oh, I did not. But I see every galaxy that you can think of. So that is just my way of saying what I encountered at the time. I thought, gym not going to happen this morning, so let me make my way to the doctor and get an appointment, which I did. After stopping the car a few times before getting there. And, and I, when I managed to get a parking and was coming out to go, obviously, the doctor started, of course, hopping in. I thought I had the stick in my car, but it wasn't, so I was using a arm, a long one with that. And while I was coming into the parking, I noticed there was a car parked just across the way, and there was an old man on the floor with a couple of ladies trying to get to himself. As I hovered across, somebody asked me if we needed help. And when I've seen your, your theme for today, purpose in pain, it just triggers that even, no matter what pain you're in, no matter what your circumstances is, you can be of service to somebody else. So somebody passed and asked if they needed help. He said, no, no, no. And I hovered over and Poor man was sitting on the floor, it was quite heavy. Shoes off, it was rainy. So I came to them and I said, do you need any help? They said, no, I said, no, come on. So I started helping them to get to the vehicle. It was a bit of a struggle because there was a language but it didn't speak English. So somebody else came over and said, can you please go into the office and ask someone to come and give us some help? Um, a gentleman came over and said he was a um, paramedic and he helped us get my in the car. That's how I'm going to go to the here you <laughs> So, after I've done that, I've got my umbrella walking stick and humbling across to the, going to the surgery. And lo and behold, a lady who was thinking of another, you see her for a while. She came to know what's the matter. Anyway, she hugged me gently and walked me with me into the surgery. I got what I needed to do. So, my, apart from just thinking about, you know, purpose reappearing, and if you remember, anyone who was here New Year's Eve, and we heard what I said, my goal is for this year is to be consistent. To be consistent in serving the Lord. And it doesn't matter what, as long as my eyes are open and I've got the breath in my body, I will serve the Lord. Because that is what He's given me this new for. So you mean we, we see this morning or remember it's about compassion. We can't so absorb in ourselves and what's going on with us. Oh, okay. No. You are here as a child of God. 
We are here as a child of God. God has given us his breath in our body, and every ounce of my breath will serve you. Even look after my pain afterwards. So I want to thank the Lord, and God bless you as we continue to serve the Lord in gladness and come before his presence with singing. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Sister Maxine. Huh? Oh, I thought they could hear me. <laughs> my beloved pastor is gone. I've got you. I've got my church family. Right? But pastor, he learned us so much. Right? Pastor didn't mind getting his hands dirty. <laughs> when we're in the kitchen, and I'm telling you, when... Our sister, his mother, was off, right? She was poorly. And we, were, we had something going. And you know, what does she do the best? Coconut drops. So we were doing them in the kitchen. But guess, well, I thought I knew what I was doing. <laughs> so we, he was doing the coconut, and then... I took a liquor. Everybody was in there, all the ladies, and I took a liquor, sh a liquor shred and one piece, and I was there. And they all started laughing because they says, that's not how you do it. And Pastor went, no, come on, and I'll show you what to do. <laughs> and Pastor was the one who showed me how to cut the coconut for the drops because I didn't know, because I was there. Well, I'm learning with everybody else. No, I was learning. Everybody else knew what to do. But, you know, our pastor was lovely in every way. You could talk to him. You could say anything to him, as I used to say to him. I'm your big sister, you know. <laughs> right? I'm your big sister. And I'd say, poor Maxine, don't see you. And that's why I have to pray for Maxine. And he'd just laugh. Right? He'd just laugh. So, you know, it's such a... People come into our lives and go out of our lives. But he was somebody that's to treasure. To treasure. He's somebody to treasure in our life. Right? And that's all I have to say. You know, our beloved pastor. Thank you. Thanks, Worship. Right, thank you, everyone who came up. And um, can I say thank you, Maxine and the rest of the family, for allowing Pastor to do everything that he saw. 
he needed doing, <laughs> you know. I left a lasting impression on us. People have tattoos in our head, just like t tattoos especially, you know. But you know, there's a uh, tattoo somewhere on our hearts, you know, because it touched each, each one of us. By going beyond the sort of ministerial, well, it was minister 360, wasn't it? Rather than 180, yeah? Thank you. Praise and worship. Are you ready? Are you ready to praise? Are you ready to, to lift the word of God, lift the spirit? Are you ready to reach out? Yes or no? Yes, yes let's go. Thank you. <laughs>
Hallelujah. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus.
Let us, let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day of worship. Lord, we are so indebted to you for all the blessings that we have been receiving from you daily in our lives. And Lord, we are so thankful for fulfilling us with your comfort from heavens, that we are comforted in this time of mourning. Lord, this morning as we come to your throne of grace, we thank you for everyone who turned into the sanctuary for worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Lord, you would bless them all. And we, we thank you for everyone who is watching us online and we thank you for each of their lives, Lord. Lord, be with them, strengthen them. Lord, protect them and provide them. And Lord, we thank you so much for um, the church that's been here for over 100 years. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness towards this church. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all what you've been doing in and with this church. And Lord, we pray that you would help us con continue and take over. <clears throat> continue to um, hold the values that we hold on to and take the church to another hundred years, Lord. Lord, we thank you for um, everyone who has actively participated in the worship this morning. Be with them all, strengthen them all, use them all among your people. And Lord, we are so thankful that you have given us a bunch of great musicians. You have given us a great bunch of people who would help us with the worship service. Lord, we thank you so much for the Holy Communion that we have this morning. Thank you so much for reminding us of your, your son's um, work on the cross for us and, our, and to make us your children. Lord, we thank you for um, the Gordon family. We thank you so much for the comfort that you give them. We th thank you so much for taking them to this day. And Lord, as we wait for the funeral on Tuesday, I pray that your grace would be with every one of us. Lord, be with the family. Be with everyone who is involved in it. And help us that we will give our dear pastor a wonderful home going pray that you would strengthen every one of us, that we will make it a point to go there and be a part of that wonderful service. Lord, we pray for all the arrangements. May everything be taking place for your glory and for your honor. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day of worship. Thank you for being with us. Be with us for the rest of the time. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Manuel. And thank you, Abigail. Um, okay. <laughs> Fairly quick. Yes, if you'd like to. I should have. Is it afternoon? Good afternoon, church. I should have come up before, but I was trying to gather the strength. Today is the third anniversary of my youngest brother's death. And even though it's sad, Maxine, my heart goes out to your family, our love and our compassion. And I've got a little poem which I read during the memorial service, and it gives me such courage. And some folks have asked me to read it again or to write it out for them. So I'd like to do this today. It says, trust in God. God has not promised skies always blue, flowers strewn pathways all our lives through. God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. But God has promised strength for the day, rest for the laborer, light on the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. And that keeps me going, and I hope it helps others in the same situation. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. Sister Shirley. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, uh, can the junior church um, go to their lessons? And as they go, I'll just say, th thank God for the teachers, Fanti Maxine, as she uh, um, leads the uh, junior church and for the children themselves as, as they got their lesson. Okay. I'm tempted to uh, sing a song. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the Son of God. I believe he died and rose again. I believe he prayed for us all. And I believe he's here now, standing in our midst. He thrilled the crowd and the streets now, and the case to forgive. Thank you. And as our brother, um, Dr. Greg, I'll call him Dr. Greg, I don't know why, but he's Dr. <laughs> Dr. Robert. As it comes, can I say, going back to the passage fairly quickly, it's beheading John the Baptist, Herod, <laughs> Herodias, Jesus' crowd, compassion. So we're looking forward to all that. Can we pray for our brother? Where is he? <laughs> oh, <yeah. All> right. <laughs> Fair enough. Father, we thank you for our brother. Praise. We thank you for his family. Thank you for his faith in you. Hallelujah. And we know that the message would be for every one of us here. It's coming through him from you. Let us receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Amen. Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Come Michael. Uh, yes. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am happy to be here with you. I'm very happy. Uh, we have been walking a path that hasn't been quite easy. But it's a glorious business. And I'm happy to be part of this business. You know, in the moments of reflection on the testimony and life of um, our pastor. You see, there are not many men I've ever called pastor in all the, my 54 years. I do not believe I've called four men pastors. Not because I haven't been in their church, not because I haven't respected them, but that calling I respect that calling. And if you have not pastored, 
then I can't refer to you as my pastor. But Pastor Glenn was someone who did that. And I, I you know, for someone to have lived the life that they wanted, Frank Sinatra had something to say about um, I did it my way. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. But to believe and to know confidently that you have lived your life the way God wants you to live your life. That you have fulfilled the declaration that your mother made over you from before you were born. <laughs> All the way through. From Maryland, St. Catherine, Mount Nebo Church. I don't know. I, 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 I went to Maryland for the first time in September. Drove down past Moreland and down to Maryland and then to water level. And it gave me such an appreciation of pastor. The way that community remained in his mind. It showed the extent to which he kept himself grounded. He could have been a very wealthy man if he felt that was his calling. He had less than a year, I think, to complete his apprenticeship as a jeweler when he decided listen I'm gonna go into the ministry of God full time so the other day I was watching an interview of this man I think his name was David Ratner who owns so many stores selling jewelry and I just smiled and said brother you haven't seen anything yet for a man to have given up all the possibility of owning numerous shops selling gold for the privilege and the confidence that he would be walking on streets of gold. Seems to me to be a very easy trade-off. His witness touched me in a great way. I saw a pastor for the first time when I was a teacher at the school up the road, St. George's. And I was, I was driving by and I saw on several occasions, this, this man, and someone said, oh, that's a pastor. I was then a, I was then a student of, of black theology, and I was like, that was my first year at the university. I was like, okay, a black minister at this Baptist church, a few stones throw away from that St. Germain. That's an interesting little thing. Years later, I learned that this same group of churches sent a minister to Jamaica in about 1919. I think it's quite interesting that God should take that young man to this place to be a witness of his power and his love. It was no longer the case of missionaries going out to Jamaica. And the Mount Nebo Baptist Church was one of the first Baptist churches established in Jamaica. But here it was that God called him for him to be, you know, his lantern in this city for over 40 years. You know, there's a saying that we use in Jamaica, why you don't know a hole than you? Why you want to know a puzzle you? This much I know that Jesus loves Maxine more than pastor could ever love her. And Jesus loves Pastor more than Maxine could ever love her. And if he, who is so holy in all his works, 
chose to separate the same person who he separated from his mother's womb. He now chose to separate him from us. Yeah. I'll struggle with the pain. But his purpose has been fulfilled. I could keep talking about pastor. But I want you to reflect on this purportedly long bit of scripture. It gives me the impression that Baptists no longer read in their Bibles. <laughs> 20 verses. <laughs> to be... <laughs> To be announced as long. Praise God. But the notion of handling, persevering, showing resilience, being purposeful is one that sits easy with us as believers. Somebody said that, you know, if any man comes after Jesus, Jesus himself, if any man comes after me, he must take up his cross and follow me. Not a wonderful notion at the time when Jesus spoke. A cross, a symbol of embarrassment. Take up that and follow me. And there are those who felt like something's wrong with this guy by saying so. But we meet upon this notion of purpose. The reason for doing something. The reason for which you have been called to feel that this is my purpose in life is a powerful place to be. The Bible declares that Jesus knew this from very early. And even though we see ways in which he somehow lingered when it came to pushing forward his ministry, there was no question in his mind that he knew where he should be going. John sat and when he was thinking back on Jesus and writing in 1 John 3 verse 8, he said, for this cause he came into the world that he should destroy the works of Satan. That he should undo all that Satan did. That he should loosen every single knot that Satan knotted in our lives, in our communities. John saw that clearly. Jesus declared, I must do the work of him who sent me. There was purpose. In everything that he was doing. We know that there has been the tendency not to look on the emotions of Jesus. And that tendency has been coming through particularly within the English tradition. Where this Greek philosophical notion of not expressing your emotions took hold among these early guys. So they were stoic and a stiff upper lip. Hold down your head and go through it. Not reflecting on your loss. Not reflecting and appreciating that the emotions I feel are real. The tendency has been to impose that on our interpretation of Jesus and what he did. But when we bear in mind that Jesus was 100% God and 100% man, that at no time did he say, throw aside his humanity and refuse to engage with the realities. We see in the Bible where he was hungry. We see also where he was angry. We see in the Bible where he was joyful. We sense that coming out when the disciples came to him reporting what happened and he said, ha, ha, I saw Satan fall from heaven. We met Jesus and we saw what we might even say we saw 
a glint of annoyance. Has your mother ever annoyed you? <laughs> I remember my mother having this tendency of messing with my ears. Never really liked it, but I, I didn't complain. And having done her hair, you know, her, she always had short hair. She would then put in the, whatever she put in her hair and then rub it in my hair. And I felt like, you know, I'm grown now, I'm 20. Are you still doing this? <laughs> when Mary learned that all the wine was finished, she signaled to Jesus, you need to do something about this. And he was like, woman, my time isn't come yet. I sensed there was some annoyance. Jesus felt he was being prodded in to ministry before his time. Like most mothers would, she simply ignored him and said to the guys, go to him and anything he tells you to do, just do it. <laughs> mothers don't waste time listening to your recriminations and your noises and whatever, whatever. Get on with it. They say, go, anything he says to do, do it. Hallelujah. This morning we woke up and getting ready for a shower. The water is cold as ever. No, I'm a tropical man. I'm not going to step anywhere near that. Went down the boiler acting up as it did before. Not this morning. The technicians were there less than a week ago and it was perfect, they said. Not this morning. And Callis was in the kitchen, the boiler is right there. A voice said to me, how come you will move mountains and you can't even speak to boil? I put my hand on the boil and I said, in the name of Jesus worked. When John died, Jesus was already in his ministry. point when John was in prison he sent and he asked this guy reach out to him my cousin and find out if he's the one or should we look for another there was never any doubt in John's mind about the coming of the Messiah but having not seen Jesus' ministry for himself and only hearing when the disciples would come in or other prisoners would come in he said, go see this guy, Mary's son, and ask him if he's truly the one. Jesus said to them, tell John what you see. The lame walking, the deaf they are hearing, those who were dead have been raised, and those who were sick have been healed. Just tell John what you see. John felt like, has my mission been fulfilled? Because here am I in prison, there's no assurance that I'm going to get out, despite the fact that Herod has been protecting me. He's of limited political power, and politics always means that somebody's going to send somebody under the bus. Have I lived in vain? Find out if we should look for somebody else. And Jesus gave them the message. And then he started to talk about John. And when he spoke of John, he said that there hasn't been any prophet greater than John. It showed the love and admiration that he had for John. 
So when John was beheaded, the disciples found Jesus and they said to him, this is it. This was what happened. For a stupid reason, they beheaded your cousin. And what was Jesus' reaction? He said nothing directly pertaining to that. He simply said, come with me. He was 100% human. And we're going to stop and look on his humanity. He was 100% human. And there is no doubt that he was touched by the death of John. He wanted to get away. Just to be among his friends. Just to reason with these guys. To talk to them some more. He was in pain. And pain is, descri is described or defined as this unpleasant feeling. We know it can be physical and it can be emotional. But it is unpleasant. Product of an injury that we usually want to resign. We want to pull away from pain. The dog will pull away from pain. Your cat will pull away from pain. Even the plants will pull away from something that causes them injury. They will grow in a different direction. They will cover over that, that point of injury. So for Jesus feeling this pain, he was pulling away just to be with his friends. The Bible says that they went on a ship and they moved off. But the people saw him and recognized him. Because they heard about him. They knew of his ministry. As far away as Syria, people had been coming to him for healing. And they ran ahead of him. Keeping the, the, the mast of the boat in line of sight. They ran from one part of a city. They met others as they went along. And they kept going. This gathering throng of, of, of people. Heading to see where he will go. And when he came off the ship. They were there to meet him. He was undoubtedly in pain. We know that the Bible didn't say he spoke to the disciples while he was traveling. He just wanted to get away. But when he reached, he saw the people. He saw the people. And the Bible used for the first time a Greek word for compassion. It's a word that brought together not just Greek but also Hebrew. It was like taking that Greek word and putting it in the context, bringing a Greek concept, uh, a Hebrew concept to it. And I want to talk a bit about this. The word was used in Greek to describe the innards, the inner parts, the belly, the gut. So it wasn't usually used in Greek before that point as a human feeling. But in Hebrew, there is this notion of gut 
and belly feeling. They call it womb compassion. There is a way in which mothers females who have lost loved ones will feel and we now understand that men can't feel it quite like that. There's a way in which women who have lost children, husbands, very close friends, feel that we men tend not to. It is seated somewhere down here. The Jamaican concept, and it might be other places too, but I'm not altogether intelligent and everywhere. There's this idea that when you're going through tough times, emotionally tough times, ban your belly. To take a piece of cloth and to wrap tightly around this midsection. Just to hold this place in so that you can go through what you're going through. In Portland, a truck that was carrying everyone to market from that area of, of, of um, Portland went over into the sea. One woman lost three sons. The community woman heard no one was allowed to go to her to tell her except women. And each of those women carried a piece of cloth and just started passing it tightly around the belly of the mother. Jesus saw these people. And he felt that kind of compassion. At that moment, the need of these people, coupled with his purpose, overrode his own pain. Overrode his own pain. His own pain became secondary. Of no significance. Because he remembers his purpose. And he saw the need of these people. You think pastor did not know pain? He did. In our last lunch, we had the 22nd of, of, or the 21st of December. He spoke of his brother and the way. How many of you ever heard pastor speak Patwa? <laughs> it's, <laughs> no, Sister Maxine, I suspect not many people. <laughs> Would speak patois in phrases, Jamaican talking phrases, you know, short sentences. Like once he was describing to me some of um, these ministers, and him say, Gregory, them not see you, you know, them not see you. <laughs> yes. But at no time would he allow his pain to stop him 
from ministering to people. I'm not just talking about preaching here. I'm talking about ministering to people. Just a phone call to say, how are you? And he's not necessarily telling you to come to church. He's reaching out to you where you are. To come here and to be involved, not just involved, actively sometimes he alone doing all the bits that needs to be done here so that we can come here and feel comfortable. And when he talks about it, he would be smiling. You know, telling me about building that birdhouse with, with, with Josephine. And <laughs> he's, la he's laughing. The little things that, that made him happy. He took me on a trip to Jamaica. He took me on a trip. And we stopped from Pleasant Farm to Linstead. And he took me to the barber. So I'm looking rough. And he took me to his barber brethren and we're talking in there. And Pastor was talking and just bringing the word of God to those guys at the barber shop. Just like that. We left the barber shop. Pasta is on a restricted diet, 600 calories per day, and he's doing quite well. And we walk down right by the, the, the I don't know how many of you know Linstead, but we walk right by where they're taking the taxis back to Spanish Town, um, almost to the back of where the NCB um, um, bank used to be. And it's breakfast time, and we just buy breakfast. Dumpling and roast bread fruit and Aki and saltfish and yes we cheated on the on the diet but it was a glorious moment to move past our pain and to put ourselves in the very thick of our purpose there is peace there is fulfillment there is joy is this not joy unspeakable and full of glory As Jesus went through that section of his ministry, after the death of John the Baptist, there was a certain urgency to what Jesus was doing. And his ministry now was, as I've said before, he was presenting the word. The healing happened you know, in passing, the healing wasn't the only imperative. It was the word. When he saw and was moved with compassion, he started to teach them the word. We have gotten so caught up with signs and wonders. That we are following signs and wonders when the Bible says signs and wonders should follow us. How many people have come here? And because they come looking, seeking for signs and wonders, they walk out. Not the word of God. They want to go someplace where someone is dictating to them how they should pray. Where someone is telling them, say this seven times, and say this nine times, and say this three times, and do this every ninth day, and do this every third day. No. God brought us into this church, into this body of Christ, so we could get the word of God. 
so we could feel the power of God. So we ourselves could be conduits, channels for God to work through us. That we might know Jesus and make him known. Pastor was passionate about this. Passionate about the word of God. And didn't see even this space as one that he could should keep to himself. But he shared the opportunity believing that God could speak through, to you through others. I was amazed at this. Jesus moving through... I use the phrase Nalinga because in it I wanted to pay tribute not only to the testimony of the practice of Jesus after John the Baptist died, but also to Pastor. Yes. The story told us of when his grandmother would send him to shop <laughs> and say, listen. <laughs> No make this dry before you come back. <laughs> no lingering along the road. Jesus called us to purpose. And he's saying to us, come now, work now. There is no reason to linger. If your purpose is clear, there is no reason to linger. If you know what God has called you to, set to work at it. He will give you the courage. And he will give you everything you need to accomplish that. Peter says that we have all we need for life and godliness. Jesus gave the disciples what they had. In another place he said to them, don't worry about what you will say. Because on that day, you will open your mouth and words will come out. Because you are walking in the purpose that God has called you for. Don't try to get everything right. As you can't get everything right. Don't try thinking what will that person say. Or what will the other person say. Because hey, they will say. So what? Most of them can only say things. They have never done a single thing in their lives. The signpost telling you where M6 is has never been on the M6. <laughs> what does it know? It's fulfilling its purpose. God has called us to walk in his purpose, but also within that to identify our purpose. And we're not talking about only young people who will then spend 40 years preaching the word of God. No. Wherever you are, as long as you are above the earth, as long as you are breathing, your purpose is still there in God. Over the last 20 years, there's come up this wellness thing. Where everyone is so caught up with their emotions. All right. And their truth. And their perception of how things should be. As if there is no more absolute truth. The truth is according to how I see it. How you see it. And so many young people, older people are caught up in this. There is a place for counseling, there is a place for mental wellness. But we who know Jesus must be careful that we don't get caught up in our own mental wellness to the extent that we have forgotten the purpose that Jesus has called us for. I don't know how many of you knew that pastor was a highly trained counselor. Highly qualified counselor. He never imposed on even those who would come to him for counseling what they should do. 
He encouraged them to find what is their purpose, what the Holy Spirit is saying they should do. It is so easy when you have got access to people in a spiritual sense, as a spiritual leader, it is so easy to have people doing what you would want them to do. It takes a man of the spirit to pull away from that, to denounce that, and to encourage each person to find God for themselves. Most people would prefer someone to tell them what to do. I myself would love for somebody to tell me what to do. Because sometimes I'm not sure. Jesus kept saying, I know my purpose. When you come to me, you join with me, and the purpose is clear. Don't sit at the point of pain. I was blown over when Sister Maxine took the service. Our Lord has called us. We have answered. Let's not linger. Let us step to the purpose that he has called us for. Let's pursue his purpose. The answers will come. Our needs will be met. Jesus spoke to those people. He said to them, Ah, these are the things those who don't know God worry about. But rather, look at this. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And all its righteousness. And these things. I struggled with that for so long. To put all my confidence and faith in God. No. No. There must be something else left for me to do. Why don't I do it for myself? God, why don't you just make me do it for myself? No, God wants us to be at our very best. And at our very best, we must be faithful to him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he... Let him do his work. There's a lot of work that only God can do. Let him do it. Let's trust him to do it. Because, hey, we are walking in his purpose. There's so many things that I feel like we could talk about. There's so many things at times we think are relevant. But are they? Are they truly relevant? These ideas that we have by which sometimes we direct our own lives. When we really put them to the test. To the test of scripture. And to the test of, of the Holy Spirit. Are they really relevant? What will it take for us to search the scripture and to trust the Holy Spirit to work his way through our lives. This Jesus declared that he had the answer. We trust him. Let us continue to trust him. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let's cast our burdens on him. He says that he cares for us. So the minute you cast your burden on him, that's his business. He needs to sort it out. He will never make you ashamed. He will never make you ashamed. 
He will find a solution. Will it be in your time? I'm not sure. But will it be in perfect time? Yes, it will be in perfect time. I had a slew of scriptures to recite. But I felt this morning that I was empty and full at the same time. I felt emotionally perplexed because like the rest of you, I'm grieving. But I can say to you with confidence, he who has started the good work in you is able to accomplish it and perfect it until the day of Jesus. Put our Lord to the test. Not because we doubt him, but because we believe him. He wants to work wonders. Boil or no boil, hot water or cold water. He wants to work wonders in our lives. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We give you thanks and praise for this moment. We give you thanks and praise, Lord God, for your servants, your people, who have listened to this brief conversation. We give you thanks, Lord God, for somewhere within it, you have spoken to their hearts, because you promise that your word will never come from heaven, will never be spoken and go back without accomplishing what it will. Lord God, I ask with gratitude, with praise to you only that your people surrendering themselves to you will prove that which is your perfect will in their lives. We ask, Lord God, that you alone be glorified, that the name of Jesus be glorified in our lives as we commit ourselves and we commit your people into your hands, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, brother, for that. And um, thank you, God, Holy Spirit for those pointers in the right direction. Amen. Amen. We come to a time of um, Holy Communion. Um, and have a deacon to pray for the bread and wine. If you can ask, or, or please, thank you. Boy, I didn't pray as we go. Merciful Father God, we just give you thanks and praise, Lord, for all who are here today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. And as we wait patiently to see your face, Father God, we come to you to give you thanks, to give you praise. Father God, as we come before and around the communion table. We remember that you sent your son, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you came. You came to show us the way. You came, Lord, that we may have hope. And through your life, your death, and your resurrection, we have that hope. You pay the price for our sins. And you said, Lord, by your stripes we are healed. So, Lord, we thank you. And we pray, Lord, that for forgiveness for all our sins and our transgressions, because you said, Lord, you came and paid that price. So, merciful Father God, we just pray 
that you will bless the wine that we drink in remembrance of your blood that was shed for us. We remember the bread that we eat that symbolizes your broken body. And Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise. And in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. As per usual, when the choir is singing, um, I'm trying to see the song is there. Yes. Um, if, if you can make our way that way, as per usual, collect the sacraments, and if you can go back to your seats, and then when this side is finished, then it's this side. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, for loving the world, for loving your people. Irrespective of what we have done, you still love us. But you ask us to, you tell us to ask for forgiveness. So before we take the bread and the wine, Father, forgive us what we've done in thought, in deed. And we know that you are the forgiving God. And as we take the sacraments 
On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, of Jesus. So we take it, we break the bread, remembering that Jesus gave his life for us. In the same way, I don't know if you finished, have you finished uh, the bread? Yes. Okay. Thank you. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Drink this and remember that Christ's blood was shed for me and for you. The key might be different, but I'm going to sing thank you. Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You went to Calvary. I'm there, you. Died for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You went to Calvary. And there you died for me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. And I feel loved, I don't know about you, <laughs> but Jesus loves me as I am, as we are, because he gave us this life, this body, gave us his spirit, gave us his love. Thank you. Um, just a few notices before we sing the closing song. There's, uh, there's cake. Pastor, are you listening? <laughs> right. There's cake and fruits on the um, exit as you leave, okay? And remember, if you need a coach for next Tuesday uh, to go to uh, Cannon Street, we meet here at nine, is it? The coach leaves at nine for Cannon Street, but if you don't want to come here, you can actually uh, um, get the coach from Cannon Street to go to the cemetery, then back to uh, the H Suite. Okay, the cost is five pounds per person. Okay, thank you. It's, um, we sing our closing a song. Oh Lord, my God, my oh Lord, my God, if we can stand, please.
Thank you. Just one more notice before the benediction. Um, if, like me, you like to look at the services afterwards, please do. Especially the sermon in this so much to feed on in there. And thank you. And kind of said to Maxine and, and the family, we keep you in our prayers. And Pastor, if you're listening, <laughs> here you are. We miss you. We love you. You're in uh, with God. And as you pass the church, I'm sure there'll be some of us outside uh, um, to blow your kisses and to wave our hands as you leave. Sad, but glorious. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's where we're heading. That's where we're going. We don't know when. Yeah, but we'll all end up at the same destination. Praise the Lord. Walk in faith. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you, give you peace. Give each person the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remember to serve the Lord. Thank you.